I'd like to introduce uh, Ed and Kim Foster to the Praise the Lord program. Would you welcome them today? <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, one of the outstanding things that the Lord has definitely done in your, in, in your life, Ed, and uh, Kim, we want you to just feel free to jump in there. And sometimes that's, that's what you have to do, just kind of jump in there. Uh, but um, uh, is receiving emotional healing in your life. And I think that is some, that's an area of, of healing that all of us need to experience at one time or another in our lives. We desperately need that emotional healing. And, and the Lord has done some great things in your life as well as uh, the, uh, um, you know, you, you just had a very interesting life. And I'd like you to just share with us some of your testimony. And uh, if you would, maybe go back, uh, of course, to me, I, I love football, so I'd like you to go back to the football days, but just wherever you want to start. Great. Thank you, Rogers. Good to be here. Uh, <clears throat> We both grew up in a small West Texas town, and uh, on Friday nights in the fall, the thing out there is to be at the local football game, and it's the individual towns get their they get their ego and their <laughs> their pride from the local football team. And oh, seeing this and growing up there, I decided that uh, probably the best thing I could do with my life was be the best football player yeah. I could ever be. <laughs> yeah. And I remember making that decision in junior high, and. God was gracious. He, he uh, granted a young man the desire of his heart. And when I was in high school, I made the uh, all-state football team in Texas and then mm. a couple of all-American teams and was fortunate to have a choice of where I wanted to go to school. Huh. Now, my father helped a little bit. He said, You'll, you can go anywhere you want to. I'll support you as long as you spend four years in Norman. Oh, boy. Well, <laughs> so <laughs> coming to OU. So uh, I knew he felt strongly about that, and I think God was leading through that. And got to uh, OU and had a fine uh, Christian roommate, a guy named Joe Wiley, who a lot of football fans will remember. In 1970, he was the uh, Big 8 Offensive Player of the Year. Mm -hmm. And uh, the coaches put us together, and again, God's hand was on that because we were two young, struggling Christians and found friendship in each other that has lasted through the years mm -hmm. and have been a source of comfort and joy to each other. And after getting to OU, uh, was fortunate again, God just blessing my career and, and uh, granting more success. And in 1973, I was one of those guys who crammed four years into five. I was <laughs> red-shirted one year. And in 1973, being selected All-American and getting to play then a couple of years in the old World Football League back in 74 and 75. And while I was in school, was active in the uh, Baptist Student Center, a lot of student work there, and both Kim and I uh, led uh, Bible studies for the BSU and saw, uh, particularly for me, got to see several teammates come to the Lord and mm. find the Lord through our, our dorm Bible studies, and yeah. Kim, the same thing in her dorm. Uh, after getting out of school, we went to play professional football and settled back down in Norman when that was over. And Kim lacked one semester of school, so we got her back in school. And, and uh, we were involved in one of the churches down there as college and career leaders. And all the way, uh, having been brought up in a fine Christian environment, both of us at uh, the small church I went to, my dad was one of the deacons and my mother was the church pianist. And so Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, there was no question about what was going on. Yeah. There were no excuses <laughs> accepted. Maybe a big test we could stay home and study for on Wednesday night, but that was the only thing. Um, setting the tone, I had that kind of background and environment to grow up in, and the Lord just really protected both of us. We don't have a, you know, a former drug life testimony or... Um, just anything like that happening that we came out of. Now, uh, the summer of 1991, I was approaching my 40th birthday, and the Lord kept bringing a, a couple of incidents to my mind and in my spirit that was uh, troubling me, and I didn't know how to get a hand on them. In college, I had learned how to memorize scripture. We had both learned how to have a quiet time. We, Kim uh, has been the beautiful mother of uh, our five children now. We. Mm -hmm. We have what other people tell us is a successful family. Our, our boys uh, are just responsible and, yeah, and take care of a lot of chores and help her around the house. And, 
on top of all that, she's homeschooling them. So it's an interesting time around our house. And talking earlier about the busyness of life, it, it just really is with all the sports and different things we're involved in. But the Lord was bringing up a couple of things that I had not been able to uh, discipline out of my life or just put pile scripture after scripture on them. And, and, and they were troubling. And he gave me a couple of memories from childhood. And, and one of them I remember distinctly back to when I was eight years old and uh, being molested by a neighbor. And probably over the years, I had just suppressed that and covered that the best I could. Uh, and of course, he had told me that if I had told anyone that there would be worse things that would happen. And, mm -hmm. and uh, so just being a scared <coughs> child, I, mm -hmm. I believe that. And of course, now I look back, I see that was just a lie of the devil. He, he wants to steal, kill, and destroy. And he wants to destroy young people's lives in this manner so that they're plagued by it the rest of their life and don't ever reach their potential in him. Mm -hmm. But I had a friend uh, I knew of who had been through something similar, a former pastor and who is now uh, doing seminars on emotional healing and his name is Don Crossland. And the closest in the summer of 91 that Don was going to be to Norman uh, was Abilene, Texas. And I found out when he was going to be there and I called him and said, Don, can I get some time with you? I need to visit with you. I know you have been through something similar, and and I, I need help. I'm ready to deal with this. I'm coming up on my 40th birthday. Um, I just don't want to be bothered by this anymore. Mm -hmm. So I uh, drove down to Abilene, visited with Don, and, and the Lord had given him some words and some questions to ask me. And one of the things he asked, he, he said, Ed, if you were to see this person today who had harmed you, back then what would be your response and you know matthew 12 34 jesus says for out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks mm -hmm. and i was surprised by my response i responded to him just totally unprepared i said don if if i were to see him today you t and you were here tomorrow in Adelaide, and you you would read about a murder in the paper i mean and here mm -hmm. for years i had walked with the lord the best i could and mm -hmm. that just came out and and we were having lunch and don looked across our fried chicken and said, don't you think we ought to handle that? Yeah. <laughs> That's why I'm here. Tell me what yeah. to do. And he just oh, led me awesome. through a series of, of uh, very simple uh, exercises and looked at some scripture and a prayer. But I think really for the first time, I was able to forgive that person really deep in my innermost being. Mm -hmm. And uh, since then, uh, as far as changes in my life, Kim will have to talk about that. I think I've become a little more calm and uh, a little more patient, a little more quiet, and all those irritating things that your children do that if there, you know if there's any anger or bitterness inside you, it comes out. Mm -hmm. I, I think I'm to the point where that's being worked on where that doesn't explode uh -huh. out of me anymore. and uh, we might let her talk about that. Mm. That was one of the things that I think the Lord really touched on both of us is that when you're an adult, you kind of learn to cope with the problems you've had. Mm -hmm. And the Lord doesn't want us to just learn how to cope. He wants us to get freed from them, heal, yes. healed, mm -hmm. and be able to go on. Yes. And with our children, I had learned to cope with Ed. I knew just what not to say at the right time and and get out of the room and things would be fine. And if we had never had children, I think we would have just continued that way. But our children were starting to be affected and not from his being angry or abusive in that, like he abused them, but I saw that they started being hurt by his anger and they were starting to get angry. I mean, I just saw that sin pattern starting again. And I said, you know, we, our goal, one of our, our goals is to raise godly children and we wanted our children not to have to go through that mm. and to be set free and to be free in the Lord. Yeah. And that's one thing I think that really touched Ed's heart because he has a real father's heart and that his children were starting to be affected. And the, the night that he drove back from Abilene, I saw immediate change, oh, yeah. immediate change. And now the things that the, the children do, they're just childlike things that can be irritating. We can laugh at them mm -hmm. instead of being irritated or, or, or get angry about it. Mm -hmm. And I've seen a major change in his life that he's really set free. And see, so he kept this from me until right before he left. 
Wow. And uh, mm -hmm. I did not even know about it. I just knew that something was bothering him, but I didn't know what. And I, I know that now after going to Don's seminar, that there's so much shame that the devil really puts on a person who's been abused that it was their fault or they're damaged now mm -hmm. or something's wrong or God can't use them. Mm -hmm. And that's a lie. Mm -hmm. That is such a lie. And if we can get it out in the open and, and minister to these people, they'll, they'll see tremendous changes in their life. Mm -hmm. But it, it takes some courage to, to step forward and say, I'm hurting and, and I need help here. Yeah. Good. Yes, to really hum, humble ourselves mm -hmm. in brokenness and to the Lord and say, I need, I do need help, mm -hmm. I, and uh, and He's able to take it from there. But you know, the thing that really, uh, uh, I don't know, if the word amaze amazes me is the right word. But you know, as I look at you and and I see uh, at how successful you were, you know, and and I mean, a lot of people would like to have been in your shoes with the kind mm -hmm. of success that you had, and it looked like, boy, this guy really has his act together and. And uh, you know, just the perfect life, and yet you were able to cope as it, you know, or kind of exist, and and yet prosper and and do accomplish a lot of things. Because sometimes when you have the concept that people that have been abused and uh, sexually and so on, they end up in you know in terrible things and mm -hmm. in the streets, mm -hmm. and and uh, and yet you were the opposite, rather than it destroying your your life, you seem to, to prosper in the midst of it, but yet uh, it still affected you. Yet it, it sure. did leak out and it did affect every facet of your life. Sure, it did. One of the ways I responded to uh, Roger, which was just a lifelong habit of the old Simon Garfunkel song, uh, song I am a rock, I am a <laughs> I, am, well, I built walls around a certain part of my life that no one could get into even after being married to Kim for years, that I would let him come so far, but no farther, mm -hmm. because there was always that prospect of being hurt again. And so I was, uh, I was acquaintance of many and friendly with a lot of people, but, it, but until the last couple of years, I have not really worked hard at being, having a real couple of what you would call kindred spirit type mm -hmm. friends. And, and bless the Lord, he took that, that. He took mm -hmm. that out of me. The, uh, the night I came back from uh, visiting with Don and being ministered to, and Kim and I stayed up late talking, and and I told her of several things, you know, that from my childhood that I never told her before, and, and uh, I used to have a secret place to go to and be by myself, and just where I knew I could just be happy and mm -hmm. be myself and wouldn't have to worry about being hurt, and things like that I never told her before, and and uh, one time she had said to me, in, in the build up to this, she had said to me one day as I was shaving and she was, we were getting ready in the restroom, in the bathroom to go somewhere, and she said, you know, sometimes I think like that you don't need me. Mm -hmm. And what that did was tell me, boy, I've kept her out of certain places of my life too. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know, she may feel now, I just, share too much with you. <laughs> <laughs> it's an adventure. You know, and it, and it just kind of, no matter how much you think you have control over those those areas of need, it just has a way of just keep snowballing. And, and you can, you begin to see it, how it was affecting your family, even though you tried your best to uh, to keep it to yourself and just, I'll just take care of this. And I mm -hmm. think sometimes that's, uh, I don't know if it's a, a man type of thing that happens to us where we, I oh, I can take care of it, you know, I don't need anyone else, I, I'll handle this myself, and we're losing control, and we don't even realize it sometimes. I agree. I, that's, the Lord has put that on my heart years ago, that that men who have been hurt would, would step forward, tell about what happened, confess the wrong reaction to it, and be healed. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, he, he has it on my heart more than ever. Praise the Lord. You know, and I think there may be some uh, people watching the program today that are wondering well, what, you know, all of a sudden you go down to Texas and you come back. What ministry are you talking about? Share with us a little bit about uh, sure. this ministry uh, of Don. Great. Uh, Don Crossland, former uh, pastor of one of the fastest growing churches in Texas in the 70s and 80s. And uh, in the mid 80s, he, he lost his church through. Uh, a revelation of a of, uh, certain part of his lifestyle and in the last seven or eight years the Lord has, has uh, healed him and renewed him through the hands-on ministry of quite a few uh, famous 
pastors, teachers, and evangelists around the country who have ministered to him. And out of this has come the Journey to Wholeness mm -hmm. book that he authored about emotional healing and then uh, the seminar. And uh, the seminar is being held, as a matter of fact, uh, tomorrow here, yes. uh, February 20th in Oklahoma City at Western Hills Baptist Church. And it's from 9 to 5. And uh, I can register at the door. It's can open register. At is eight. it just one one day? One day, one day right? And it is uh, it is full. There's mm -hmm. an hour and a half break for lunch, but the rest of the time it's really full. And and he is a tremendous teacher and presenter of God's word. And mm -hmm. saying this is this is how we start these habits, our reactions. This leads to this, leads to this. Here's what God wants to do. Stop it back here, and He can change these habits in your life through your response in his word mm -hmm. and uh it's it's just been uh one of the big things in our life that we support wholeheartedly mm -hmm. because of the help that both of us have received yes mm -hmm. praise the lord. lord and and it, and it seems that so many times yes we can take it to the lord but uh, uh we we need ministry we need yes. uh, uh the ministry of people like don and and i've read his book uh this last year and it really was, is a blessing i would encourage uh, anyone that is watching the program, if you've not read this book, uh, that you would get it. It's entitled Journey uh, Toward Wholeness, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure you can get it in, in the Mardale. Christian Mardell's carry, carries Carrier. it, and uh, yeah. that, I think that's where I got mine. Mm -hmm. So uh, I would encourage you to read this book and the, uh, the uh, seminar tomorrow. It's tomorrow, and, mm -hmm. and uh, that'll be at Western Hills Baptist Church. And it begins at what time again? At 9 o'clock. 9 o'clock. goes through 5. And they can just go there a little before 9, register right there. You get a, a, a workbook, and once you pay, you're considered an alumni, you can go to any of these seminars anywhere free. Mm. This will be our third one in eight months. Look at that. And we're really <laughs> looking forward to it. Praise the Lord. What is, what is the cost for the seminar? Uh, $35, dollars for per single, 55 for a couple. But there are scholarships available too, mm -hmm. so we don't want to hold anyone back. If they come and say we can't, we just don't have it right now, then we'll visit with them and and arrange something. Mm -hmm. well, Praise the you. Lord. Well, let's do this. There is just a couple more things I'd like to uh, uh, to ask you all, but uh, I'd like us to just have another song at this time, and it'll also give uh, people uh, an opportunity, especially men that may be watching the program today uh, uh, or hearing it on tape, that, uh, watching it late at night at a rerun or something. Some of uh, so Most of the time when we meet people about the program, they say, oh, we saw you on TV. It was at 2 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> or I didn't realize so many people are up at that time of the, uh, the day. But anyway, uh, whatever the situation and need is in your life and, and you feel like I can handle this or you've tried to handle this on your own and you realize that you're just losing control, you're not able to do it, you can stop it right now. I believe there's healing. I, I believe that Ed is a testimony of God's healing power. And again, I come back to that song, what God has done for others, he will do for you. We know that we serve a God that with him nothing is impossible. Nothing is impossible. And God can heal you today. And, and I think that's what we want to do right now. And Ed, uh, I don't know if you may have a word. I wanted you to come back for just a little bit here. If there's a word upon your heart that you'd like to speak to men and women, because we know that this is something that is not only happens to men, but happens to women as well. And uh, it's alarming. I'm always amazed when I hear these statistics of the emotional, physical, sexual abuse that, uh, that people have gone through. And, and we're all touched by it. I know that uh, it's it's, if every now and then I, I even look at my wife and she has shared with me things that she has gone through in her I have, childhood. You know, I think like the one in four has gone through sexual abuse and I'm one of the ones that's gone through sexual abuse. And, um, and that, that is true. You feel like I did something. It, you know, I did something. Yeah. And you're a child. Mm -hmm. Give me a break. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So don't, don't feel, I don't feel any guilt. The Lord has healed me of that as well. I don't feel any guilt. And, and furthermore, God has cleansed me of all that I, I, I love, know. you know, that uh, I've been married. We've been married almost 20 years. We've got four children, and and uh, because of my stand with the Lord, that sometimes I feel like a virgin. You know, it's because God has made me whole, and uh, there's no um, there's nothing in my mind that says that I'm dirty. And uh, mm -hmm. and but only God can do that for you. Hallelujah. People can counsel you, but God's got to be the one that'll that'll cleanse you and He can heal you of that. Yes, Amen. 
Well, Ed, is, uh, before we pray, and I'd like you to lead in this prayer for those that have experienced these areas of their life uh, and that need healing and wholeness and cleansing. If there's anything you just want to share along that line, and then would you lead us in prayer? Sure, sure. Um, uh, what's on my heart is that uh, men in particular would respond and know that uh, with their sharing of these deep hurts with someone will come healing. Yes. Uh, it's not something that anyone can keep inside and deal with and just keep suppressing because at some time or another God is going to put his finger on that and want that dealt with. Mm -hmm. And he will heal and he will cleanse it. Just like Dolly said, all of, you're a new person. Mm -hmm. When he does that, when he removes that, um, I'd like to go ahead and pray now. Yes. Can I just add one more thing to that? Sure. That, uh, that I'm always amazed, uh, um, and yet I know how this works, is that even after we're born again, you, you mentioned growing up, you were raised in a Christian home, you knew the Lord and, and went to church and everything. and uh, and yet, sometimes people struggle with this area. How can it be, if I'm a Christian, that I should still have all of these deep-seated emotional problems and needs and tormenting things in my life that I just, you know, I thought it should have been gone when I was saved, when I gave my life to Jesus. And yet we discover when we get off the altar uh, after receiving Christ uh, uh, that uh, that area has not changed. It is still there. And it kind of reminds me of a series that I did some time back concerning uh, Nehemiah and the rebuilding of the walls mm. of, of Jerusalem. That when he came, the temple had already been rebuilt, but the city was in shambles. And, and the book of Nehemiah says that the walls were in disarray. They were in rubble, actually. And, uh, and I liken that, the city of Jerusalem, to our own lives. That even after we are born again, and the temple is rebuilt, yet our walls can still be in rubble and need to be repaired. And God wants to do that in your life. So to those men, women that are watching the program, uh, and you feel like, why should I be experiencing this? I'm born again. That's the reason is because there's need of the restoring of the walls of your soul, healing to take place. And that's what God wants to do. As Ed leads in this prayer, recognize where you're at and what God wants to do in your life today. Praise the Lord. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the privilege of being here and being able to share. And Lord, we know that the sharing of our testimony and the sharing of your word is what brings life. And Father, we can only be true to what you've done in us. Lord, for all those who are watching and hearing and who have hurts from the past, whether it's it was just verbal abuse or mental or emotional or physical or sexual, Lord, it, it doesn't matter. You're the healer of all these. Father, we just confess the sins of all yes. the abusers Hallelujah. in these cases. Oh, Lord, we just confess for them. And, Father, we ask that you would forgive them. And, Lord, now yes. we ask that you would begin the process of healing for all of oh, those people yes, who are in Lord. deep need. Hallelujah. Lord, Bring you even healing. that they would feel your hands around them. Mm -hmm. Lord, the, all the references in the scripture of the, the pouring on of oil, mm, and the healing yes, balms. Lord. Oh, Lord, allow people just to feel this now. And Hallelujah. To have a point to look back and say, on well, this day, the Lord begin the process of healing in my life. Glory to God. Lord, that is what we ask. And Satan, we just address you in the name of Jesus, by the blood that was shed on the cross, and by the word of God. Yes. And we just command yes. you out of these people's lives now in mm -hmm. Jesus' name. Yes. We command you to release your hold. We break oh, the hold you have amen. on them from these old hurt responses, mm -hmm. from these bad habits, from the addictions that these hurts may have led people into. Yes. We come against Hallelujah. you now in Jesus' name, and we command you to get off of them in the name of Jesus of Nazareth. Yes. And Lord, in all these places where there was hurt, where there was just all this emptiness, Father, we ask you to fill it now with your spirit, and that each person would just have a bubbling brook coming up within Thank their you, soul. Lord. Lord, that you would just 
have your spirit overflow. Yes. And my Father, God. we're reminded of Paul's words in the Living Translation Absolutely. where he says, now the spirit of the Lord is in you, mm -hmm. helping you oh, glory. want to obey him and glory helping to you God. decide to do this. Father, we thank you for that. Yes, my God. We thank you for that. We thank you for the presence of your spirit, which will heal and overflow and restore. We thank you this in Jesus' Hallelujah. name. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen and amen. amen. Well, Ed and Kim, we thank you for being here today. And I know that there are people that have been blessed by your testimony and have been challenged in their heart to really seek the Lord and to turn to Him everything in their lives that need cleansing and healing. Praise the Lord. So we just want to thank you thank for you. being with us on the program today. Praise the Lord. God thank richly you. bless you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Our first guest today is Ed and Kim Foster, and they're really going to be a blessing to us. Ed, God bless you. Now, I'm glad I didn't stand next to you, Kim. Oh. I mean, Kim, I'm sorry, not Kim. Ed, because my word, how tall are you? Uh, six four. Six four. Tall and you, enough. You played uh, football at OU. At OU. And uh, what year was that? Uh, 71, 2, and 3 were my varsity seasons. Right. And you and you roommated with? My roommate uh, was Joe Wiley, who was well, a fine Joe, you know. uh, Christian man, a great running back back then. Yes. And then uh, I was a freshman when uh, Steve Owens was a senior uh -huh. in 1969. And uh, I have the great privilege of working with Steve today in the insurance business in Norman. Yes. So uh, those relationships have lasted 20-something years. My so it's, it's, it's just been a blessing. Well, isn't it wonderful that uh, people play football can be saved, can't they? <laughs> That's right. They can, they can be saved, and uh, they can marry pretty girls. <laughs> they can have families and have businesses. It's, uh, it has been good for me over the years to keep the relationships with the guys I've played with. We went through something extremely hard together. And, and became friends, and uh, it's fun to see them now where they are in their life and, and uh, see them react to what God's doing with them. How Amen. Good. Now, notice that big ring you got on your finger. Is that from OU? Now, that is uh, my senior year in 1973. We were undefeated, mm -hmm. and uh, that was our undefeated season ring. But as God was uh, dealing with us as a whole, we were... Also on probation that year. Yes. So we won 10 win. Uh, we had 10 wins. We tied Southern California. We had no losses, but we didn't get to go to the Orange Bowl and play Notre Dame for the national championship oh. because we were on probation. So, yes. Uh, that was sad. Now, the previous two years, we had gotten to go to uh, New Orleans and play in the uh, Sugar Bowl. So those were two good trips after two hard seasons also, but yeah. that, that was a lot of fun. My, well, that's the first time I've seen one of those rings like that. I just had, I just had oh, to see you. that. <laughs> uh, Great. Tell us, uh, uh, Ed, first of all, about a little bit of your past. Were you brought up in a Christian home? And tell us. Sure. Uh, yes. Uh, grew up in West Texas in the small town of Monahans out by Midland, Odessa, out in the uh, Permian Basin oil country mm -hmm. and uh, Kim did also we have been uh, sweethearts since I was in the uh, mm -hmm. 11th grade and she was in the ninth grade well wow. so it's uh, more and more we understand that's quite odd these days yeah, to yes. have known someone that long but we both grew up in church I grew up in a uh, small uh, mission church on the outside of town we lived outside of town and average attendance probably a hundred people and my mother was the pianist and my dad was uh, a deacon and a Sunday school superintendent. Uh, my brother and sister and I had no excuses. Uh, mm -hmm. Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, and uh, Monday night for visitation. Uh, we were there. Amen. And uh, we knew when the car would leave out of the driveway, <laughs> and it was our responsibility Amen. to be in it. And uh, the only thing that could save us was during midweek, maybe if we had a big test on Thursday that we had to study for Wednesday night, and we had gotten old enough to know they could uh, go off and leave us and have some confidence we would study a little bit and <laughs> not watch Star Trek or right. yeah. something else yeah. that was going on. Now, what did this 
building you? Because a lot of people think, you know, I've, I've been to church Sunday. I don't need to go to church on Wednesday. And, you know, I, I'm very concerned about that so much of the time. And what did that build in you? Because I think people need to know that builds something inside of, of kids. Um, I, I thank my parents for their dedication, their integrity, yes, and their, their stand of not compromising on their beliefs because that did put in me um, a solid foundation of the Word. And uh, my mother being the pianist, uh, my junior and senior years in high school, I, was, I served as the uh, music leader. Now, that was an easy job because all I did was get up and wave my hand and follow my mother <laughs> mm -hmm. at the piano. <laughs> but they, they really didn't push things on us or push Amen. us, squash us to fit us into a mold. Uh, they let us be ourselves and they supported us in all our other school activities, outside nice. activities. But uh, they, they made Christian life attractive. Mm -hmm. yes. Amen. And yeah. uh, I just bless my folks for that because without that, uh, there's no way we would be together today or, or still uh, be interested in walking with God. Uh, mm -hmm. They they made Christianity real. It, yeah. it yeah. wasn't something that was just talked about. And you shape up on the way to church, even mm -hmm. though you're arguing in the car, and put on a smile and be there. Uh, my folks practiced it all week long. Dear. Amen. It was a way of life. And, you know, I think that so many parents have been swayed by uh, the scholastics, the school pressures. They have to be involved in everything. And we have missed that value that Ed had put into him, the integrity of God's Word, integrity of family life with Christ. And now school is the most important. And everything evolves around school instead of the church. And that's why we're losing a ground, but now the parents, the people are waking up and realizing, just a minute, it is God, it is mm. the moral standards. So I thank God that this was put into, do you remember rebelling against that at all? Um, a, every once in a while, mm -hmm. a little bit now, of course, my junior and senior year in high school, uh, I reflect back on things like that in terms of football seasons. Sure. You know, that's what I remember sure. most. So we're talking about the fall of 67, fall of 68. Sure. Well, you know, the year of 67 was the year of the flower child, you know, uh -huh. in San Francisco. And, and uh, you know, hippies place. were flourishing. And, and I came to school at OU in 69. And, you know, we uh, what folks we called hippies, they're throwing frisbees with their dogs on the South Oval. And so all this was coming in. And, uh, but I've got to admit that really wasn't attractive Good. to me, that lifestyle. Uh, you know, we, we see the first uh, risings of the sexual liberation back then. Yes. Uh, and uh, it, it was just an experience to come to a, you know, a place where they had three times as many kids on campus that were in our whole hometown. So <laughs> it was a new experience, but, but, uh, I knew, you know, every once in a while I have to go home. Yes. And, and my dad's going to, we're going to greet and we're going to visit. And we're going to have a meal and we're going to sit down. And he's going to say, how are things going? Mm -hmm. What's happening? Mm -hmm. Tell me what's going on. Crazy. And he wasn't going to take, uh, you know, a, a, a uh, uh, small answer. He wanted something that was deep. Yeah. And he wanted to know where my roots were. And, Good. and I knew I was going to have to be accountable how to that. Uh, I remember the... Uh, when I came home at the end of my freshman year and and Kim was still in high school and for some reason, whatever the days worked out, came home on a Sunday. And Sunday night, Kim and I went to church and then we went to eat afterwards and really just catching up on what all had gone on. And we stayed up and invested till about one o'clock. And I got home and of course I had been used to doing that in college now <laughs> with, if I wasn't studying for a test or whatever and we weren't playing ball, it was, you know, you were used to, used to staying up and really with nothing going on besides just staying up. And I got home and I was supposed to start to work the next day in the oil field for my summer job. And Dad was up and I thought, well, what's going on? I got in there and, and he just had one question for me. Uh, or he had two questions. He said, how are you going to give your boss tomorrow a full day's work with staying up this late when you had to start tomorrow? And then I said, well, Dad, uh, you know, we went out to eat. We went to church, we went out to eat. And, and we were talking, and then we were praying. 
He said, <laughs> how many prayers do you think the Lord heard when you were out too late? Mm. I just Beautiful. said, thank you, and turned around and went to bed. <laughs> I, there was nothing else after yeah. that. Beautiful. So he spent a lot of time, and, and that had such an influence that carried you through your college years and, and really influenced mm -hmm. you what you're doing today. How sure. You're Kim, tell us a little bit about your background. Well, I, I grew up also in a Christian home, and um, I guess instead of just giving a, just a regular testimony about I was saved at an early age and, and, the, and, the, and the things that a lot of people hear, my, my background is so similar to Ed's. Um, I've been thinking more how that's related to where I am today. Mm -hmm. And I had a real strong foundation growing up with my parents. Uh, but I've been thinking about now, as we have children, we have five children, mm -hmm. thinking about the influence of our families generational lines and how I can influence my children and raise them up to be strong and not be weak because I, I believe every gener every family line has weaknesses mm -hmm. and we need to know what those are so we can help our children be strong in them. Helen. And I was thinking, you know, I did grow up in a very good family that we were very morally pure. Our character was very strong and I was saying, Lord, what? What was the weakness of our family? You know, we were good. I mean, for generations, I know of Christians and oh. leaders, and you know, what what what's the weakness in my family? And God said, "You have the one I hate the most." Mm. And I said, "What?" Well, you know, we 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 never got into any uh, sexual sins. Yes. We never robbed him by generous people, godly, mm. loving. What is the sin that we have that's the one you hate the most? And he said, pride. pride. Oh. And it broke my heart. Cause, and I started asking, I said, well, God, why is pride worse than these other things that are so horrible and hurt people? And, mm -hmm. and, and just, why, why is pride worse? And he said, because when someone has done something wrong, if they have murdered somebody, if they have gotten involved into a sexual perversion, they can always turn and call out to me, and I'll deliver them and restore them. Mm -hmm. But he said, why well, I hate pride more than anything is because pride never comes to me mm. and asks me for help. Mm -hmm. Never turns to me. Pride says, I don't need you. Oh. And I said, oh, God, you know, forgive me. Please forgive me, and please help me to work that into my children, that even though they're growing up in a godly home, that we don't have pride, mm -hmm. that we are compassionate, <clears throat> that we're loving, and that we call out to you. How? Because even, even in good families, mm -hmm. we've got problems. Yep. And we need to cry out to mm -hmm. God and ask for help. How? Yeah. So that's a good answer. That's, I think that's it, it kind of slips up on you. You know, you're, you're full of pride and you don't know it. Yes. And pride does go before a fall. Well, together in faith. we want to talk just a little bit now about uh, Ed had something happen to him when he was eight years old, and then Ed, just take it from there and then go yes. right into the, what you're doing for this meeting and everything. Thank you. Sure. Um, <clears throat> over the years, Johnny, the Lord would stir something up in me. I, as my boys, we have four boys and a daughter, and as they started getting older, Every once in a while, I would, I would find myself reacting to them in a way that was just too angry. Mm -hmm. And it, it, it didn't have anything to do with whatever their offense was at that time or their disobedience, but it was something in me. And, and I pushed it down and suppressed it and prayed and thought about it and read my, uh, had my quiet time, did my daily Bible readings and was always just around the surface of this anger and never got into it. And a friend of mine, Don Crossland, who was a pastor in Waco, Texas, uh, was struggling with some things in his past. And as a result of it becoming public, he lost his church. And through it, the last seven years has developed the journey toward holding a seminar. And it originally started with dealing with uh, sexual addiction and sexual hurts and, and offenses. And it really has been expanded now, though. It, 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 anybody with any kind of addiction can receive help 
from his insights and what the Lord has developed through him on this now. Well, I knew we had been friends with Don for over 20 years, and I knew the Lord had worked that with him, and, and I suspected somewhere in my past there was something that had to do with some hurt, and, and the Lord was gracious and start bringing it up because he saw that I was ready to deal with it now. I was yes. serious mm -hmm. about Good. dealing with this. I wasn't yeah. just trying to make it fit mm -hmm. somewhere. And he reminded me that uh, something I'd really forgotten about, but when I was eight years old, a neighbor had uh, sexually molested me. Mm -hmm. And over the years, that I just covered that up, but it hardened and it grew, and I was angry and bitter over yeah. that. And mm -hmm. And I remember the neighbor telling me, uh, you know, if you tell anybody, well, I'll do worse. Oh. And so I was scared about that. And, and uh, Johnny, you remarked on uh, my size while I go, my stature. I want to tell you, uh, if people don't understand this, if you ever see a big man with a mean countenance or uh, a fierceness to him, it's because he has been hurt. Yeah. And he doesn't know that God can heal him of that. Mm -hmm. and, and I'll guarantee you that is it. And I saw that in football and, and I saw that being around wrestlers and you see that and, and that is what they're struggling with. And, and if they have a mean spirit or a tough spirit, it's because one time they were tender, but they got hurt and they didn't know how to handle it. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, I called Don and I said, Don, I know you have been through something similar and I want help now. How close are you going to be to Oklahoma? And this was the summer of uh, 1991. And uh, he said, well, I'll be in Abilene in a month or so, Abilene, Texas. So I said, okay, I'll meet you there if you'll spend some time with me. And so drove down, five and a half hour drive, and got there and spent the day with Don. And he, he led me through uh, a, a, a repentance uh, exercise, and, but I, w I repented over the wrong response to that and then was able to forgive that guy. And one of the questions Don asked me was, uh, Ed, what would you do today if you ran into him out here in the lobby of the hotel? I said, Don, frankly, honestly, you would probably read about a murder tomorrow that ha occurs in Abilene, Texas today. That was, and I hadn't planned on saying that. That, yes. that came out of my heart. You know, uh, Matthew, the Lord said for for out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. That was in here. Yeah. And he just smiled and said, we, we better deal with that. And we can't. <laughs> the Lord is going to help you with that. Yeah. So I think for the first time, I was able to forgive this guy. Yeah. And I came home, and uh, Kim noticed a change in me as far as being more open and transparent. Mm -hmm. uh, but when he walked in the door that night, just within a few hours, I knew his face was different. Oh. He had a peace on him yes. he had not mm. ever had. Oh. And he had never shared this with me until right before he left. Because so, of shame. Sure. Yeah. And that's mm. what, I think that's what Satan does with a lot of us. He says, especially if a child is victimized, yes. it was your fault, you're dirty, you're damaged. Oh. And God can change that. Hallelujah. He can make all things new. Mm -hmm. Amen. And that's what we need to get out to the people, that he yes. changes and restores when a person is seeking that. Amen. That's what you know, it's, it's, it's as big as Ed is, uh, yet there was a Goliath inside of you. Yes. Mm -hmm. And that Goliath had to be slain. That's it. And you would have never that's slain right. him if you had not faced him and picked up the stone. Mm -hmm. Jesus Christ mm -hmm. and That's put right. it right between Praise his eyes and then you took the word of God <laughs> you took the word of God which is the sword of the spirit and whacked off his head cool. so now that he yeah. doesn't rule over you That's, easy. That's right. That's so, right. So tell us about this meeting now that's coming up. Uh, it is uh, <clears throat> there's actually a Sunday night it's a preview to the meeting at uh, Western Hills Church on Southwest 44th. Pastor Jerry Wells is very gracious to allow us to be there and Don will give uh, a preview and we'll say here's what we're going to cover because this is his uh, total ministry now mm -hmm. and there's a uh, it's free so Sunday night's free now to go Monday and Tuesday night and get the notebook and to be there and there's a little bit of workshop involved with it it's mm -hmm. not just sitting yeah. and sitting there these Good. things going over yeah. your head or passing by your spirit it's to be involved Amen. and yeah. to work it out and to personalize it 
So uh, Monday and Tuesday night, there is registration Monday night. There is a cost to it. It's uh, $35 per single, $55 for a couple. And also, if people are in financial hardship, there are scholarships available. There are, there are people who have gone in the past who said, boy, if I can help anybody else, I'll pay for them to go. So that's available. Um, the Don just comes and he shares very openly. He gives his personal testimony, what happened in his life and how, what the Lord has brought now. And this is probably the best combination of uh, spiritual and clinical mm -hmm. help that, that I've run across. Because after I received healing in this area, I did a lot of reading. I read a lot of different books, trying to just get a lot of different angles. And, and Don does a wonderful job of telling what happens in your spirit and then how that affects your mind mm, and your will and your emotions and, and how, you, how your whole being reacts and then what God will do in the restoration process and what he'll give back to you and put more in you that you didn't have before. How uh, many Christians are falling prey to this sexual addiction that is being uncovered now with this Holy Spirit shaking and coming Amen. to light and purifying oh, the body. It's happening. The, the statistics that Don has developed just in his own counseling are tremendous. Yeah. Tremendous. Uh, I think at the uh, last year five. he told us one out of five, uh, one out of, one out of uh, three or four girls has oh. been molested and one out of six or seven boys. My, my. We have so enjoyed having you two on the program today. God bless you. What a, what a witness you are. And I'm always able to, I always love it when I can tell our kids, hey, I know a football player or 